Sony released their a7C Mark II in September 2023, and although that's clearly a fantastic camera with tons of features, in this video I want to talk about its predecessor, the original a7C. This is a camera I've been using for over three years now as my main camera for photography and YouTube content creation, and I've still not felt the need to upgrade because it's such an excellent little camera. The a7C Mark I originally retailed at £1900 in the UK or US dollars and can now be picked up secondhand for only around £1000. In this video, I'm going to give you 10 reasons why I think the a7C, a camera released in September 2020, is an absolutely cracking deal in 2024. So. Let's get into it. Reason number one is that this camera has a fantastic 24 megapixel full frame sensor. If you've never shot full frame before, I've got to tell you there's something just amazing about it when compared to smaller crop sensors like APS-C for example. Compared to smaller sensors, full frame allows you to achieve blurrier backgrounds, tends to be better in low light due to the larger sensor being able to gather more light, and allows you to shoot at the true focal length of whatever lens you're using, rather than having a 1.5 or 1.6 times crop factor like you get with APS-C, for example. I think the a7C could be an excellent option for anyone looking to move to full frame from APS-C or Micro Four Thirds, or for someone who's looking for an excellent B cam for their existing full frame camera. The second reason is that this camera is super compact, especially for being full frame. If you have big enough pockets, you could even maybe stretch to say that this is pocket sized. Or maybe not. But this means you can take it travelling really easily and it doesn't weigh your bag down. I've taken it to many parts of the UK, as well as Italy, Germany, Belgium and France, and I've had a great experience every time, capturing photos and videos of each trip. Speaking of capturing photos, reason 3 is that this camera takes excellent images, with the ability to take 14-bit uncompressed RAW files that are super flexible when it comes to editing. I actually shoot exclusively in the compressed RAW format, which uses half the data but still retains a ton of information in each image file. I continue to be super impressed with the images that I've captured with this camera, and I love the colours and the dynamic range you can achieve with a bit of editing in Lightroom. While it's excellent at capturing photos, the a7C is no slouch when it comes to video either. You can shoot 4K up to 30 frames per second, and that 4K is downsampled from 6K, which makes it super crispy and detailed. For me, as a tech and camera enthusiast, this helps me capture all the tiny details of any product that I'm filming. There are obviously cameras that you can buy now, such as the Sony ZV-E1, that can shoot up to 4K at 120 frames per second. However, I think for the vast majority of creators, they probably don't need that kind of power. And for most people, the a7C is going to be enough and at a much cheaper price. The a7C can still shoot 120 frames per second at up to 1080p, which is more than usable. You can also shoot in high dynamic range picture profiles such as S-Log2 or S-Log3, which gives you a load of extra dynamic range to play with if you're willing to do a little bit of color grading. Although, bear in mind that this camera only shoots 8-bit video rather than 10-bit video, so you can't really do any heavy color grades without the image and colors starting to fall apart pretty quickly. Alternatively, the standard picture profile on this camera gives some some really nice colours in my opinion without the need for colour grading, which means that it's great for vlogging or if you're shooting something that you need to turn around quite quickly. It also has 5-axis in-body image stabilisation, which makes it easy to get stable handheld videos and photos. Reason number 5 is the exceptional autofocus in this camera. It still holds up as having really great autofocus even 3 years later. While it doesn't have the AI autofocus features of the a7C Mark II, it does still have truly excellent eye tracking, which I don't think has failed me in three years of using this camera. You can also initiate real-time tracking of a moving subject by just tapping the subject on the screen, and this sticks to the subject really well in my experience. The autofocus on this camera has just made filming myself for YouTube so much easier because focusing isn't something I've had to worry about at all. Before we get onto reason six, if you are enjoying this video, please hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Another thing that makes filming yourself easier is the fully articulating screen on this camera, which comes in as reason number six. As a content creator, this is an essential feature because it saves you having to get an external monitor to make sure that your shot is framed correctly. This is more and more common on your camera cameras, but is super welcome on the a7C. Reason number seven is the fact that this camera has excellent battery life, owing to Sony's NP-FZ100 batteries that power it. With photography, battery life has basically never been an issue for me with this camera. With video, I haven't had the camera die on me before I'm finished filming a talking head section of a video before, and sometimes because I'm absolutely shocking at getting what I'm trying to say right, it has taken over two hours of filming at 4K 24 frames per second, and the camera has still had about 20% battery left. It's also never overheated on me before, even though it has shown the heat warning on the screen a few times. But bear in mind, I'm from rainy Scotland, which stays quite cool when compared to other countries. So if you're from a hotter country, this might be more of an issue for you. Number eight is build quality. This is a very solidly built camera. 
And despite the body only weighing in at 509 grams or 1.12 pounds, it still feels reassuringly hefty in the hand. This makes it feel substantially more premium than something like the much more budget and plasticky ZVE10, for example. This camera is also weather sealed, meaning that as long as you have a weather sealed lens, you can take it out in less than ideal weather conditions with no issues. After three years of use, my A7C still looks in excellent condition. Design is more of a subjective thing, but I personally really like the simple and quite industrial design of the A7C even if the compact size comes at the expense of some ergonomics. The grip is quite small, but it's not going to be an issue for you unless you're holding the camera for extended periods of time, like over an hour, for example. Most of the time, I'll have my A7C clipped onto my Peak Design capture clip when I'm out, so this isn't really an issue for me. The A7C also comes in a silver option, which looks a lot more retro and which some people might prefer over the black option that I opted for. The penultimate reason is the price. When the A7C first released, as I mentioned at the start of the video, it was quite expensive at £1,900 in the UK or 1800 US dollars. But three years later, you can now pick it up second hand for around only a thousand pounds in the UK or 1100 US dollars, which I honestly think makes it one of the best camera deals of 2024. It's editor Aaron here. I realized that there's a key point about price that I didn't make explicitly clear. So the prices that I'm referring to in this video are for the A7C's body only. So that's not including a lens. As this is an interchangeable lens camera, you will need a lens to make it work. However, there are some really good cheap options available to get you started with. If you're stepping into Sony full frame for the first time, then I'd recommend picking up Sony's 50mm f1.8 lens because you can pick this up second hand for only around 130 pounds or 170 US dollars. The main talking head section on this video was actually all shot on the A7C using that lens. So as you can see, you can get some really clean and good quality results out of it. It's also a really versatile lens for photography, and I've used it in the past for things like portraits, street photography, and even landscape photography. Anyway, back to the video. Despite being over three years old now, this camera is still a content creation machine. And although I constantly want the newest camera that shoots 4K 120 frames per second and has the latest AI autofocusing capabilities, when I'd stop to take a step back and stop to think, I realized that I don't actually need a more powerful camera at the moment. This camera does everything I need it to do, and it does that really well. Lastly, Reason 10 kind of relates to the excellent price of this camera. It's the fact that this camera is compatible with any lenses that support Sony's E-mount. This gives you an absolutely huge selection of lenses at a really wide range of budgets, which means you can start at the budget end and work your way up as you progress as a photographer, videographer, or content creator. And that's just the first party Sony made lenses. There are tons of third party lenses available from manufacturers manufacturers such as Sigma and Tamron, many of which are cheaper than Sony's offering while giving you 95% of the image quality and features. Fundamentally, I think you can now get some insane bang for your buck with the A7C, and that's why it's a crazy good deal in 2024. If you want to pick up an A7C for your camera bag, then I've put a link down in the description for you. But if you want to hear more of my thoughts about the A7C, then you'll be pleased to know that I've created a whole series on this camera, but I'd recommend that you watch this video next. Otherwise, as always, it's been an absolute pleasure, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Cheers.